is a story of the famous artist Picasso sitting in a coffee shop, minding his business, when a fan walked up to him and said, Picasso, please will you sketch something amazing for me on this napkin? He took the napkin, sketched away. In 30 seconds, he passed the napkin back to the fan and said, there you go. The fan said, how much will that cost me? And Picasso said, a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars! And the fan couldn't believe that it was going to cost that much. They said, how did it cost so much? Because that took you 30 seconds. Where is the value in that? And Picasso looked at him and said, the value is that it's taken me 40 years to do that in 30 seconds. So Picasso, if I gave you a napkin, how much would you charge me? <laughs> We are here in this amazing destination in Franschhoek at Sanctuary SA and we are going to meet an amazing guest. We are going to meet Picasso, not Picasso that we're aware of. We're here to meet Pig Picasso. Picasso is an incredible artist who has sold paintings throughout the world. But there's such a story behind Picasso because it's not just about the actual artwork that we find value. It's the story of how the artwork is created and by who it's created. So I really like it when you smash that like button. So smash it now. I like it, YouTube likes it, and most importantly, Picasso likes it if you smash that like button. So smash it and let's go and meet this amazing artist. Joanne, thanks so much for joining us on Coffee with Craig. Really appreciate you taking out the time to, to be here today. I know you've always loved animals. You've always been involved with animals over the years. How did this um, sanctuary come about? Sure, okay, I'll try and keep that short and sweet. Um, basically, um, yeah, animals have always been in my life. Um, in fact, my father was born in India and he talks about, you know, um, his whole childhood was filled of elephants and and peacocks and things. So I think it's kind of in my, my genetics to love animals in any case. But I um, always had an adopted dog actually by my side growing up. And uh, then I adopted uh, uh, an amazing dog from a local shelter that literally changed my life. And we traveled around the world together and ended up living in California. And um, when I lost him in 2013, I wanted to um, uh, build a the world's most inspiring dog adoption center and I decided to choose Franchuk as that area. So I came and pretty much drove down the road, saw this amazing farm for sale and I said, I'm going to do this. And I'm not in that league. I don't know, I, when I say I don't know how it happened, I believe in divine intervention. And cut a long story short, ended up with this amazing property and this extra piece of ground, um, you know, that came along with, this, with the main part, which was going to be for the adoption center. And I wasn't too sure exactly what to do with it. And then I started thinking, you know, I always wanted to rescue some farm animals, uh, have a little barn, and just the satisfaction mm. of knowing that these animals were safe from uh, mass expo exploitation. And um, yeah, so I built this barn, and um, it was a little bit bigger than I thought. And I thought, wow, it's Noah's Ark, it's huge. Let me make this into a, a registered organization and, and rescue more animals than I was considering at the time. And pretty much, that's what happened, called it Farm Sanctuary SA and uh, it was finished in 2016 and almost, yeah, almost exactly five years ago the time came to rescue some farm animals. And then tell me, you, you adopted a, a pig? Yes. How did, you, how did you come about Picasso? So um, Farm Sanctuary SA as a non-profit is about um, Re reawakening the connection between what we eat and, and the lives of these amazing uh, animals and so it was always about uh, a rescue project it wasn't about going to initially adopting a pig more about going into a typical industrialized factory farm and rescuing rescuing these uh, farm animals so 
it was pretty much going literally if you go to any factory farm it's pretty much not a cool mm. place you don't want to see it you, you you probably wouldn't even know that you're probably passing a, a, a good couple of hundred just to get to franchise from cape town and i just went in there and managed to acquire two little piglets there were literally hundreds and hundreds running around in this concrete in this concrete shed it was it was not a cool place and 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 managed to pull two little piglets out and um one became Picasso. Okay. And how, I mean, how did you become a painter? How did that all come about? Uh, well, okay, so pigs are very smart and intelligent animals. And so when Picasso, when uh, these, these two little piglets were running around, I thought, how can I keep, how can I keep them entertained? Because, mm -hmm. you know, they are, they're so inquisitive and, and, and as I say, very intelligent. So the barn had just been completed and we had old, old, I threw in a soccer ball, a tennis ball, some golf balls because I play golf. <laughs> and there were some old paintbrushes lying around from when the barn was being uh, built. And it was interesting, Picasso literally ate and destroyed everything that I gave her except these brushes. Okay. And she played a little bit with them and I thought, well, maybe there's something, there's something in this that I should maybe explore. And we okay. incarnated, you know, Francis Bacon or something. And um, it just took a took some positive, a little bit of positive reinforcement and encouraging her to pick up the brushes. I modified them so they would fit her mouth better. And it didn't take long before she was picking them up um, um, and dancing it across this canvas that I placed in her in her stall. That's amazing, Joanne. It was absolutely amazing to see Picasso actually paint. But I know you very involved with that. So for me, artistry or painting, there's so much value behind it that people aren't really aware of. So, so for me, what I want to know is, I mean, why does one piece of artwork cost a certain price and another one costs so much more? There's this attached value to something like artwork. A, a good question. Um, qu there's quite a few answers to that. So first of all, let me say that uh, the sale of the artworks, the proceeds go to Farm Sanctuary SA. So Picasso is a quarterback around here. Um, because of Picasso, we have a great a team. She pays all the salaries of the staff here, all the food for the rescued farm animals, the education, the rescue operations. She is the queen diva. So um, there's a lot of respect for Picasso. She's definitely the queen. Um, and we all run around her to make sure that she's always happy. But as far as the, the painting process and the value goes, so there's definitely a collaboration between a, an animal and a human. Picasso is the only one that touches a canvas. So we, I set everything up for her. I select the colors. And to a point, I can, when I say manipulate, it's not a positive word, but I can, I can, I can do some things to try and get her to do certain things on the canvas to, to build up a painting. Because if a painting looks like something that a human being can relate to, then they feel a stronger connection to the painting. And ultimately, and then, and then they probably value it more. Exactly. So if it looks like something that a human, be, a human eye can can notice in the painting it becomes a much higher value and if it's just a great dance and abstract expressionist painting then it'll be priced at an, an average price of 20 25000 depending on on the colors and the composition and, and what is the what is the most expensive painting that Picasso sold most expensive is 100000 100000 100, rand so it's quite interesting if i could just tell the story so she did a prince harry a couple of weeks ago and it sold for 50000 quite quickly to a spanish buyer and there was someone who very, in a nice way, said, well, how come it's, you know, it's so expensive just because a pig did it? And the, the nice response to that was just to change the way the thinking is that there's 8 billion people on the planet. If you gave every single one of them a paintbrush, they would all pick up that brush and paint something. The quality is up to the person who's judging it, right? You can give 8 billion pigs on the planet a paintbrush and there's only one pig that's gonna pick it up and do a painting. That's pig why pig. I think it's actually worth a lot more than it currently is. Um, so so it's just, it just depends on your perception, your cultural conditioning and what you think. And this is why this project is so exciting is because it's about challenging the status quo. It's about, it's about looking at a, a beautiful art piece and saying, you know, challenging yourself to be hesitant about really appreciating it, appreciating it because only human beings can do art. But actually, no, it's, it's not like this, you know, and to also challenge how we make our food, uh, the conditions and, and um, all these, all these interesting interesting conversations come into, come into play when you are looking at a Picasso. So I think for a lot of people, they don't, probably don't value animals, people don't value pigs, they see it as food. And I think what's so amazing with this is there's this whole story behind it. Um, and I got to watch the two of you co-create the, the painting together. 
changing of the, the actual canvas, the different colors, and you both had to work together. So it was almost like a third element connecting the two of you together to go make this amazing artwork. Yeah, it's teamwork. It's teamwork, and again, what, what's so what's so nice about that alignment is that it's, there's a relationship between, you could say, a, a food, a farm animal, and a human being, and that's also the message: is that we can have a different type of relationship to to these animals. It doesn't just have to be in a in a neat package sitting in a in a um, in a grocery store. It can these are these are individual interesting, unique farm animals, and very rarely do you get a chance to actually see one doing its creative thing and actually a living a living farm animal. I mean, most people that come in here, besides besides saying, wow, the art's actually really good, which is nice, they can't believe how big Picasso yeah. is. So, you know, the most important thing is this connection, being able to see a pig. I mean, if you consider the fact that um, if you consider the, the fact that, you know, uh, the, the estimated is 77 billion farm animals are, are slaughtered every year. But when else did you actually really see one? Okay, not today in this barn and stuff, but how come you don't see them running all over the place if there's so many? And there's a deliberate, there's just a, there's a, a out of mind, out of sight. And what we're trying to do here in an inspired way is for people to look at this amazing, fat, divine, fine swine and go like, wow, this actually, this is actually a pig. This is actually, this pig's smart, she's creative, she's unique, and maybe we can just do things a bit differently or think differently about it. So, I mean, not only are we valuing the painting, but we're starting to, to value maybe farm animals a little bit more because they're so intelligent and there's so much more to them than just our food. Sure, absolutely. So, I mean, it's amazing what you've, what you've done here as the, the sanctuary, how you're obviously trying to create this awareness that people understand these, these beautiful animals have a personality, they have so much more to them. Um, and the connection with humans and animals is just so amazing to see. It was amazing to see how the two of you connected yeah. to create this beautiful, this beautiful artwork, yeah. which is so nice. And um, so, how would someone, how would someone be able to to contribute and buy one of Picasso's paintings? Well, to to purchase a, a Picasso, um, we it goes through the website really, Picasso.org, and there's a there's a shop um, icon that you can click on. It takes you to a generalized site of all her artworks. Um, and then as far as to contribute, you know, this was never, this project was never set up to, you know, to, to um, create a, a, a painting pig that would sell a lot of art and we would make a lot of money. It's a, it's a fantastic thing that it's working, it's worked so well and that she does sustain this whole organization. But money was never the motivation, it was always about the message. So anyone who's inspired by Picasso, I'll just say, you know what, just do some research, Google factory farming and try and just become a little bit conscious about what's going on. This, we're not trying to say at Farm Sanctuary SA, it's not about saying if you eat animals, you're a, you're a killer or anything like this, what we're trying to say is, you know, I believe people are always going to eat meat at some level, but the point is we can all agree, because of, if you could see what goes on on these farms, we could all agree that we can do things much better than we're currently doing. So, you know, to create a sustainable world, a much uh, to reduce climate change, to uh, for better health, there's so many reasons just to cut back on, on the meat. You can't give it up fine, but maybe, you know, meatless Mondays or mm. you support, uh, you know, free range eggs. It doesn't mean that there's no cruelty involved, but it just means that you're, you're, you're taking you're taking steps to create a better world. Don't we want a better world for, for everyone? Um, so, as I say, it's a positive inspired mission um, and it's it, it, the fact that we have a painting pig and it's fun is one thing, but there's a very serious um, mission out there to really get people to wake up a little bit and to make to make so positive changes. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, if people wanted to come through and visit Picasso, are they able to do that? Sure, we open every day. It's very casual around here. <laughs> um, so. Uh, 10 to 4 every single day and uh, Picasso has recently released her own wine label, okay. um, Picasso Black now, White now Rosé. Are you on the, the wine tram? Yes we are. Okay. So yeah, you can come and you can hang out with the farm animals. Um, actually the, the uh, our resident Carl Ballou is a favourite around okay. here. People come for Picasso but they leave falling in love with Ballou. And um, we have some very basic snacks, some coffee, obviously the wine tasting and it's really just a look at it like a, a place where people can come and hang out and just kind of try and feel like a little bit a little bit um, like home okay. you know amazing Joan thanks so much for for having us thanks for being on coffee with Craig thanks Craig uh, thanks for coming out and it, it's been amazing to see Picasso paint and to see some of this incredible artwork so thank you so much for everything that you do no, great thanks, thanks.
In the world we live in today, everyone is an artist and everyone is a creator. Here on Coffee with Craig, we have brought you the one, the only, Picasso. You've got to see him paint some amazing artwork. For me, value is so subjective. What makes one piece of art more valuable than another? Well, I can tell you, it's when a pig paints it. So come here to Franchuk, come and visit Picasso, come and see the art that he makes and drink some of this amazing wine. You will only see this right here on Coffee with Craig. So if you haven't yet, hit subscribe. We will see you very soon.